Tell me this about that guy. Nobody knew it meant. I'll, I'll show you the secret. Birthplace of the internet. That's right. Belter Hall 3420. And wow. did, you, did you watch her, her talks, um, Lo and Behold? Ah, look at it, because you'll see it starts right here. I was just right. talking about it. <laughs> 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 sure. Ah, here we are. Future <laughs> potential student. That's, that is that is the the baby. First driver. That's the first piece of intended equipment ever. That's the, the star of this room, if you will. <laughs> and I had it hide it in my office for about almost 20 years. They wanted to throw it away. There were dozens of those around the country at each site, one at each site, and they were all kinds, only two of Military body <coughs> mini computer made by Honeywell, modified by these folks, Volta Lerner and Newman, to, to basically implement the specification we made so it would become a router. So they modified the software and the hardware. The important thing is right here, he says, M number one is the first router ever. Okay. And if you look at some of these others in the software, but when they want to send a message to the network, there's a lot to be done. You have error correction, you have to have the address, destination address, source address on that machine, let it do all the software, and connect the high-speed lines to it. That would have been a terrible burden for every host, you can call these things host computers, coming on the network. We basically oh, all floated so after this, let him do it. Got it. And wow. that's what the router network is today. That's what Cisco sells. Cisco sells. <laughs> that's where your internet began. It's got hardware, it's got logic, memory, power supply, modems, interface units. It's uh, When this was being built for the first time, were people looking at this saying, oh, it, this is like building a rocket of sorts, something completely new, with pretty standard well, technology. This was a standard Honeywell mini computer, All right. state of the art. It was a Honeywell DDP 516. This was a mini computer, imagine the big computer. Right, big ones were huge, rooms, it's got a unique odor. Old, yeah, it's the musty. Computer. Yeah, it's, now you can like say, wine. Yeah, you smell it. The odor of the <laughs> At any rate, uh, what's interesting is right here is where it did its work. These four square feet when it sent the first message, October 29, 1969, So now you know the exact minute when this revolution began and the four square feet. Around. Well, okay, is this, that, is that, this, that your help? Is this, or oh, this from 1962? Oh, no, 69. No, no, it's good. This 62 is when I finished my PhD work at MIT, right. and I developed a mathematical theory of how these networks could perform. I don't even see numbers there. No, no, it's all about 1969 over there. So 1969, so this machine arrived here the day after Labor Day, 1969. And we sent a 15-foot wire to this machine. We were able to send bits back and forth. But one node is not a network. It's isolated. A month later, according to schedule, the second node. So here we are. That's the imp. All right. That's this machine. It's a Sigma 7. All right. A month later, Stanford Research Institute. Uh, they put their imp in. BBNN delivered the imp. Oh, OK. BBN leased this line from ATT. At a blazing speed, you know, 50,000 bits per second. Today, that's a joke. It's very slow. Now, those days were really high speed. And SOI, Stanford Research Institute, connected their host computer to their imp. That was in October, right. September we got out. So now we had a two node network. Now we could do or demonstrate the way this network should perform. Namely, the idea is I'm sitting here at UCLA and other machines in the network, these machines have stuff I want to use. The trick is to log in from my machine, that's me or Charlie, log in through the network to that machine as if you were a local user and use the services of that machine. That was the whole idea of the network, to be able to share resources. He has good stuff, I have good stuff, 
if I wanted, either copy it here, the whole thing, that's crazy, All right. or give me access. Right. That was the idea. Okay. So now we had a two node network. We could now demonstrate the idea of doing exactly that. So that's when we decided to send the first message. All we wanted to do was log in. To log in, you have to type L-O-G on the terminal here. Right. That machine knows what you're doing. It'll type the IN for you. So all you got to do is type L-O-G. L -O -G. Lock. So we had Charlie Klein down here, right. and a programmer up there late at night, a guy named Bill Duval, right. and we're ready to go. Except this is new technology. Is it going to work? How do we know what's happening? So to make sure we understood what's going on, we had a telephone connection from Charlie to Bill. Actually, it was running through this line. Now look at the irony here. We're using a telephone connection to test a new technology just going to eat the lunch of the telephone network. It's going to make it disappear as it did. So we're using the existing technology to, wow. to make it disappear. So Charlie typed the L. He said, you get the L? Got the L. Type the O, get the O, got the O. Type the G, get the G. Crash. What crashed it? Was it our computer? No. Was it our imp? No. Was it the high speed line? No. Was it the remote imp? No. It was the SRI host computer, it was their fault. <laughs> uh, what happened was, see, this interface from an existing machine to this new switch, we each had to build our own. You know, each, each host on the machine had to do that. Oh, we got oh I see, I see. So, what Bill did, he didn't expect to have to trans, you know, you type the L, it sends the L back and pins on the terminal. So when Charlie said, get the L, Bill said, I got the L, and the L then appeared here, and the O. When you send the, send the G back, remember it's gonna give you the IN, it has to send GIN, three characters. Bill didn't anticipate that, so his buffer overflowed. Oh. Quick fix, he had my later fix, did fine. Okay. But the, but the point is, the first message was, Low, as in, lo and behold. <laughs> and there's the Werner Herzog thing. Ah, uh, okay. He called it lo and behold. There uh, we go. I added the and behold later. <laughs> <laughs> it was so prophetic, powerful, by accident. We didn't prepare one. We didn't have a camera. We didn't have a... a nobody, a nobody even videoed it? Video? <laughs> there were no video devices like this. No, no camera. The only record we have is in this log book right here. In October, we decided to keep a record of what was going on in this network. And one of my students at Software Engineers, a guy named John Postel, he decided to start making notes in October. Okay? And here, on October 29th, 1969, 10.30 at night, Charlie entered the key thing. We talk to SRI host to host. That's the only record of the got a lot of the vision ever. of what the net today, but I missed one very important component. And that's what this CMN does, social networking. Great to see social networking. Talk, this was talking about computers talking to each other, or people talking to computers, not people talking to people. We first saw that when email came in in 1972, and it took over the traffic of the network. We said, ah, this is about people communicating. And the social networks is a manifestation of that today. So, uh, yeah, but I, you know, I never anticipated that my my 99 year old mother would be on the network at the same time my seven year old granddaughter would, and they were. Uh, okay, so so that that's that's beautiful. Okay, that the basis of this room. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Sure, we got sure. that all on film. I've been in the sacred room with the sacred man. <laughs>